Hey guys, how's it going? A lot of people have been asking me to do Mike Tyson film study. So I decided I'm going to drop a Mike Tyson film study as an early Christmas present for you guys. I really hope you guys enjoy the video. So with that short introduction out of the way, let's get straight to the film study of one of the best aggressive counterpunching pressure fighters in boxing history, Iron Mike Tyson. Okay, let's begin by talking about Mike Tyson's very famous peekaboo defense. As Tyson advances towards his opponents, very rarely does he do so without head movement or feints, and he never has his hands carried low. This approach is widely known as the peekaboo style or the peekaboo defense. It's a simple slip outside, then a slip inside head movement. So we're going to take a look at some examples. 29 seconds into the first round, his fifth first round knockout in his eight professional fights. Again. Yeah. Round number one, scheduled six, but hold on to your hats. Nobody thinks it's going to go that far. So let's break this down. As you can see, Tyson is able to avoid those jabs by Tyro Biggs because of the natural side-to-side -side head movement, which is afforded to him by the peekaboo defensive style. Tyson stalked his opponents, but he wanted to limit the damage that he might receive in the process of doing so, which is good defensive responsibility for Mike Tyson. And again, let's take a look at his defensive technique here against Eddie Richardson. See, Mike Tyson puts pressure on his opponents, but he did so in a very controlled and sinister way. Mike Tyson would put direct pressure on his opponents by advancing towards them and indirect pressure by the use of his constant feints. Tyson makes himself very elusive and difficult to hit by doing so. And this is crucial to Tyson's style. The more you miss, the more likely he is able to land his punches and punish you. Tyson is a counterpuncher, an aggressive counterpuncher. Okay, so now I just want to elaborate on the fact that Tyson is a technical, aggressive, counterpunching pressure fighter. So people often wrongly describe him as just a puncher, or some even call him a brawler, which is absolutely disrespectful. Mike Tyson was actually an aggressive, counterpunching pressure fighter, similar to someone like Gennady Golovkin, which we have today. So let's take a look at some of his skills he displayed in 1985. I'm glad you pointed it out because down he goes. Though. So as you can see, Tyson is going to chase his opponent and he's going to display some skills. Here we see Tyson splitting the jab of Michael Johnson with a jab of his own. Now notice that both fighters are changing head slots as they shoot the jab. So this is impressive from both men. Notice that Johnson shoots his jab first. So what you're actually looking at is a counter from Tyson. Now Tyson is defensively responsible enough to move his head after the jab. Now this does two things. Firstly, it protects Mike Tyson because his head is a moving target. Secondly, it doubles as a feint to the right side of Johnson's body. Tyson has a vicious left hook and by changing head slots and levels like this, Johnson is going to move to the left to avoid a body shot from Tyson. If Johnson moves to his left, Tyson counters. Mike Tyson is aware of this and brilliantly steps his lead foot to his left and changes the angle with his trailing foot to open up a beautiful angle for the right uppercut to Johnson's head, catching Michael Johnson as he moves to Tyson's right to avoid what he thought would be a left hook to his body from Mike Tyson. Outstanding from the young Mike Tyson. And then you see him defensively responsible. A couple more punches and then you're going to see him avoid, uh, I believe, a left hook from Michael Johnson. So now we see him avoid a left hook. We're going to see him slip to the inside of a straight right hand and counter with the body shot to the open and exposed right side of his body. I mean, this is just brilliant counter punching from Mike Tyson. Right hand. It was a right hand right there. No, we didn't see it yet. I'm Wait, sorry. Here it comes. Now, a boxer is never more vulnerable and open to being countered than when he punches. See, punching leaves you open somewhere every single time. And Tyson was an aggressive counterpuncher who loved to punish his opponents whenever they missed. In fact, Tyson's style actually relied upon his opponents throwing punches to be highly successful. Tyson loved to counter his opponents. There's the hook. hook to the body. He and he missed, missed the, right. the right. Yeah. It was just the left hook. And he has aggressive. Mike Tyson not expected to come out this strong against Long. Five of eight have fallen in the first. Is it six of nine as Tyson comes out with a strong right hand barrage again? 
This is as bad as I've ever seen Donnie Long look, but and give Tyson credit. That's so as you can see, Tyson steps to the outside of his shoulder. Mike Tyson pushes off his lead foot and steps his trailing foot to the right to completely change the angle of attack. Notice also the change in tempo as he does this. Mike Tyson is now on the outside of Donnie Long's left shoulder and is in a perfect position to attack with just about everything, whereas Donnie Long is totally neutralized. Mike Tyson is not just a puncher. After he misses the straight left hand, notice how there's a little bit of control there for Mike Tyson and he seems to step back. Mike Tyson takes a quick step, quick but subtle step back with his right foot, thus creating not only the angle but also the required distance to shoot this left uppercut, which of course he misses. But then Tyson follows up with a vicious left hook, which drops Donny Long for the for the last time. This is an excellent display of skills from Iron Mike Tyson. There's a left hook, and down he goes. And Tyson is very smart to leave the scene of the crime before the police arrive. Okay, now we're going to talk about something that I call the Mike Tyson rising jab. Now, this jab was such an underrated aspect of the arsenal of the peak Mike Tyson because this Tyson jab was designed to do damage to his opponents. This was a powerful punch. The key to the success of this jab is Mike Tyson's ability to combine the skills of slipping, rolling, ducking, along with stepping in from a crouch position with the jab. The jab. Down even lower. So as you're going to see, Tyson shoots the rising jab. Pay attention to the fact that Mike Tyson is going to crouch slightly or duck on the way in with this jab. He effectively makes himself a smaller target and also increases the power of the jab by rising from the crouch position the moment he lets the jab go. This is very effective against a taller opponent, such as Tyrell Biggs. Now Tyson doesn't even land this jab flush on the jaw of Tyrell Biggs and it still sends him reeling backwards. Tyson's rising jab was effectively a power punch due to his insane power. The power of course is generated from the elastic band effect or the recoiling effect of springing from a crouched position with the jab. Excellent technique from Mike Tyson. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about one of Tyson's most widely used combinations. Tyson liked to use the jab to actually set up his combinations. And the one we're going to be looking at is the jab or feint in the jab followed by a left hook, right hook. Tyson of course had remarkable hand speed, especially for a heavyweight. And of course he used this to his advantage. So we're going to take a look at the jab left hook right hook punch combination and a combination by tyson, a so as you just saw tyson uses that jab to set up this combination the tyson jab would usually freeze his opponent which would buy mike tyson the time to shoot the left hook and then the right hook in this case tyro biggs is attempting to counter with a left uppercut biggs held his right hand low for the entire fight and underestimated the hand speed of mike tyson and of course, Tyson will beat him to the punch. Now, the jab left hook is a great combination for a fighter with good hand speed because most opponents will not be expecting the jab to be followed up by a second punch from the same side. Usually after the jab comes the right hand and people are programmed to avoid the one too. Very few can make the adjustment to avoid or catch a left hook from the same left hand if it's thrown very quickly. The, the other thing is also the left hook is a blind side punch and often lands on the blind side of an opponent so you don't see it coming. So it's a very effective punch combination. Tyson ends the combination with a right hook to the temple. Another Tyson combination is a left hook to the body followed by the left hook to the head. These are both equally effective punch combinations. But now let us take a more closer look at the dreaded Mike Tyson left hook. Now the Mike Tyson left hook is easily one of the most devastating punches in all of boxing history. This single punch earned Mike Tyson almost every single one of his knockouts. Let's take a closer look at this incredible weapon. One of the best um, punches in boxing history. Long is 27. Oh, oh wow. wow. Well. Left hook, good night. What a great shot. It's key that we understand that the punching power is generated from your body mechanics and is influenced by your technique. 
Your feet and your hips are the key sources of power and leverage on any punch. Your arms are merely to deliver the force. Tyson launches off his right foot and brings his entire body weight behind the punch, as you can see. As Tyson lands this left hook, he squares himself up momentarily. This allows him to drive maximum force into the punch. He is not worried about being countered simply because no man alive at this time would even dare to think about countering this hook. So by squaring himself up, notice that Tyson brings his right hand closer to his opponent's jaw so he can follow up with the right hand very quickly if he has to. Here you see you missed the first left hook. The Mike Tyson left hook is a short and close punch to, which is kept close to his body. His right hand is holding the phone and of course this is good defensive responsibility. His left shoulder is raised high to protect his chin. Good offense must have built in defense. See when he lands the left hook he's going to square himself up by, by stepping his left foot forward. But this brings his deadly right hand closer to his opponent if it is needed. As you can see Tyson do that. And after he knocks him out, Tyson very smartly leaves the scene of the crime. Okay, so now we're going to talk about cutting off the ring. Mike Tyson, as we all know, was able to cut the ring off very well in virtually all of his fights. But what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at his fight with Larry Holmes in 1988 to see how Mike Tyson was able to cut the ring off and then get on the inside against Larry Holmes. So let's take a look. Straight, the younger Mike Tyson. Tyson doing a nice job in this big 24-foot ring, cutting Holmes off in the corner. Larry lashes up with a left hand. And then so as you can see, Larry Holmes is circling out to his left and Mike Tyson is moving laterally to his right. So as Larry Holmes circles to his left, Tyson moves laterally to his right to cut the ring. But notice Tyson does not just move laterally and stay on the outside. He constantly edges forward and he's moving at an angle to his right, which means he slowly eats away the distance between himself and Larry Holmes. So now we're going to see Holmes try to escape out to his right. Now you see Holmes start to move out to the right and Tyson starts to move laterally to his left to cut Holmes off. So as Larry Holmes now tries to circle to his right, Mike Tyson moves laterally to his left to cut him off. Once again, Tyson does not maintain his distance on the outside as he moves laterally. He is slowly edging forward. This is how you cut the ring off properly. Larry Holmes finds himself increasingly trapped with every passing moment. So Tyson has effectively cut off the ring and Larry Holmes knows he's in grave danger. So he responds by shooting his jab. Tyson slips the jab to the outside and this is what made Mike Tyson incredibly difficult to fight. In his prime, Tyson was always ready to slip the jab and get on the inside. His reflexes were very sharp. And there you see Tyson gets on the inside, successfully cuts the ring off. So now we're going to talk about Mike Tyson's ability to adjust and find a way to win. In his fight with Larry Holmes, Holmes was very effective in the early rounds at keeping Mike Tyson at bay. It is well known that the lead hand or the jab is the best weapon against an aggressive pressure fighting style. So let us take a look at some examples of Larry Holmes using his lead hand to disrupt Mike Tyson. Awkward as he lunged forward with the left hand, trying to keep it in the face. Tyson showing no respect so far, boring in the way he always does. First round, looking as though he's trying. Mike Tyson fighting as he has fought every other fight. Just a. This is a. This is a. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the adjustments Tyson had to make. Mike Tyson had to make an adjustment in order to deal with Larry Holmes' lead hand. The first adjustment he makes is to break Holmes down to the body whenever he exposed the lower left hand side of his body by sticking out his lead hand. Tyson very quickly begins to make Larry Holmes pay every time he makes use of his lead hand. So we're going to take a look at a few examples of this. How long can his legs stay strong? There's a lot of how long can his legs stay strong? There's a lot of Again. So we see Tyson coming in. Larry Holmes is going to use that lead hand once again to try and keep him outside. And so you see boxing is of course a brutal chess match. Tyson understood that every time Larry Holmes stuck out his lead hand, he exposed the lower left hand side of his body. And because Tyson was an intelligent fighter who could adjust in the ring, he used this opportunity to dig Holmes with vicious right hooks to the body, effectively using Larry Holmes' game plan against himself. 
So now we're going to talk about the second adjustment he makes. The second way Tyson nullifies that lead hand is simply to trick Larry Holmes. Tyson could see that Holmes was tracking his lead hand with, it, with his lead hand like a laser guided weapon. So Tyson causes a distraction and then uses the opportunity to bypass the lead hand. So this shows you the brilliance of Mike Tyson because Holmes was tracking Tyson's head with his lead hand. React to it. React to it. So as you can see, Tyson's coming in. Once again, Larry Holmes tracks Tyson's head with his lead hand. So as you can clearly see, Larry Holmes is tracking Tyson's head with his lead hand. And this is what Tyson is going to use to trick Holmes. So you see Tyson causes a distraction by pushing Holmes' lead hand away. By knocking Holmes' lead hand away, Tyson knows that Holmes is going to be very eager to get his lead hand back in his face. So let's take a look at what happens. Now you see Tyson change head slots by slipping to the outside. So now this is going to force a reaction from Larry Holmes. And there you see, as I said earlier, Mike Tyson knew that Larry Holmes was tracking his head. By causing that distraction and then moving his head over to the outside, he knew that Holmes would react by moving his lead hand to the outside to maintain his tracking of Tyson's head. Tyson then uses this opportunity to slip to the inside and has therefore bypassed the lead hand, which is simply outstanding intelligent boxing from Mike Tyson. How long can his legs stay strong? There's a lot of people react to it. Third man on the ring, the referee. So now we're going to talk about Mike Tyson countering the jab. Like Gennady Golovkin today, Mike Tyson was very good at countering the jab. He would catch his opponent's jab with his right glove and then shoot a parallel jab with his left, often catching his opponents as they stepped in with their jab, which often increased the damage, of course, of Mike Tyson's jab because they're stepping into the punch. So Tyson catches the jab and then shoots his own jab back. Aggressive counterpunchers like Mike Tyson and Gennady Golovkin will always seek to counter your jab, especially if you shoot the same jab over and over again. You need to vary the speed of the jab as well as the intended target of the jab to have any real success. You should be jabbing to the shoulders, to the chest, to the gloves, to the head in order to throw the counterpunchers rhythm off. but a 38-year-old Larry Holmes could not continue that round at the round. Oh, a big right hand, and down goes the former champion. He was there, right in the button. He should be hanging on. Now with the right hand, the left hand. He's going to hang on, and he'll stop the fight. Down he goes. Now he's hurt. It's all over. He is knocked out. He didn't even bother the count. It was a vicious, vicious right hand. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the fact that Tyson had an underrated ability to change levels and approach his opponents, often making his opponents miss by the smallest of margins. Mike Tyson was a specialist at fighting the taller opponent and would often frustrate them by coming in very low and staying behind his high guard defense. And then of course Tyson would seek to land big punches which would often tip the balance of the fight. So let's take a look at an example of this. Such magnificent shape. Big vicious body shot. Take such magnificent shape. Big vicious body shot. Take so as you can see, the best defense is really being able to make your opponent miss by just a fraction of an inch. And here Frank Bruno literally misses this jab by a fraction as it flies over the top of Tyson's head. Now Mike Tyson's low approach made him an absolute nightmare against taller opponents who often found it very difficult to find Mike Tyson. And here you see him land this right hook to the body. Now of course, due to the low approach by Tyson, the closest target he could see was the left side of Frank Bruno's body. And so that is exactly what Tyson goes for. Tyson loved to use the right hook to his opponent's body when they would use their lead hands against Mike Tyson. This is exactly what we saw against Larry Holmes. Okay, so as I said previously, Mike Tyson liked to approach his opponents, especially his much taller opponents, by coming in from a very low angle. This time we're going to take a look at Tyson approaching with the jab and using the momentum of the jab to actually set up an overhand right to the head against Frank Bruno. And we're also going to see how he sets up a left hook by changing levels and then delivering the surprise left hook. Right hand catches Bruno, left hook, Bruno looks ready to go. 
So here you see Tyson come in with the jab. As you can see, Tyson changes level slightly, moves his head out to the right, and then approaches behind that jab. Now with the way Tyson is coming in, most of his weight has actually been transitioned to the right side of his body, and he can quite easily shift the weight back over to the left side of his body with the right hand over the outstretched arm of Frank Bruno. Now you see the overhand right, which Tyson lands over the outstretched lead arm of Frank Bruno. Now what Tyson has just done is no different from slipping a jab to the outside and coming back with an overhand right. See, as Tyson came in, he changed levels and moved his head out to the right, and he also came in behind that jab. So everything Tyson actually did primed his right hand and set up the right hand. So all he really had to do was shift the weight back over to his left by shooting the overhand right. Brilliant boxing from Mike Tyson. And then we see Tyson change levels and look for an opening on the right side of Frank Bruno's body, which he doesn't seem to find. And here we now see Tyson spring from a crouch position to land this beautiful left hook. Now this is an excellent example of a surprise left hook which lands on the blind side of an opponent. Changing levels and shooting a left hook is always going to be effective against a taller opponent as we saw with the late great Joe Frazier versus the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali. Now we're going to take a look at Mike Tyson's ability to finish off his opponents. Tyson was a seek and destroy fighting machine and his ability to finish off his opponents with brute force and power is of course legend, but there is a very cerebral genius to what might look like pure aggression to the untrained eye. Mike Tyson was very cerebral with the way he finished off his opponents. He was thinking in the ring. This is round five. Remember, a fighter cannot be saved by the bell as the big right hand lands. Tyson knows he's got him in big trouble. If he doesn't answer it, Richard Steele has moved in and has stopped the fight. So the first thing he sees Tyson lead with this left hook to the body, drives Frank Bruno to the ropes, and then he's going to follow up with a beautiful left hook, right hook. And now we see Tyson is looking for openings. You can see he's thinking in the ring. This man is intelligent and he's actually looking for openings and probing for offense. And now you see the exact moment where Mike Tyson has found his opening. Notice he's looking to the lower left hand side of Frank Bruno's body. And Tyson is going to now aim with a right hook down to this side of his body. This is beautiful boxing from Tyson. And you see Tyson shoot that vicious right hook to the body. Frank Bruno will now drop his guard ever so slightly. Of course, this is due to the pain of the right hook down to the body. It's a natural instinctive reaction from Frank Bruno. But this is going to now set up this beautiful right uppercut from Mike Tyson. So first you saw the right hook to the body followed by the uppercut from Tyson. Now the hook to the body will usually make your opponent drop their guard, of course. This is due to the pain of the hook, which allows you to then sneak the uppercut through the middle. This is simply one of the best punch combinations for unlocking your opponent's defense. And now you see Tyson using block removal techniques. Here we see Tyson use his left arm to actually remove the right arm of Frank Bruno. And this is done to create an opening which Tyson can then exploit. This man was not only thinking in the ring, but his IQ and intelligence was vastly underrated. Beautiful boxing from Tyson. And there you see this beautiful right uppercut which Tyson is able to land due to the opening that he created by moving Frank Bruno's right arm out of the way using his block removal techniques. So once again, Tyson never really gets the praise and the credit that he deserves for his intelligence. Then you see him finish with a left hook and the referee has no choice but to stop the fight. Beautiful technical skills from Mike Tyson. Tyson wins on a fifth round TKO. Okay, now I'm going to talk about Mike Tyson switching the attack. Now, most of the best fighters in history were known to switch the attack, and this simply means being able to go from head to body or vice versa and do so effectively. Tyson was great at using levels of his attack to defeat his opponents. So, by changing the levels as he attacks and by attacking to different levels of his opponent, he's able to continuously vary his offense. So you notice that as Tyson comes in with his jab down to the body, he presents a very small target to his opponent. This is him changing levels as he attacks, but he also varies his level of attack by going down to the body of his opponent. This made Tyson a very difficult opponent to fight, especially for taller fighters. 
So Tyson follows up with a straight right hand to the head. Now again, as Tyson rises from the jab to the body, this adds more momentum and punching power to the right hand. This is an excellent example of Mike Tyson switching the attack, also known as changing levels of attack. A principle that all great fighters simply must master. So again, we see in this example, Tyson shows the right hand, slips, shoots the left hand, left hook to the head, and then shoots the left hook down to the body. So we're going to take a look at this again. Tyson's going to show the right hand, faints, then he slips down to his left. Biggs covers up, he shoots the left hook to the head. He has the awareness to shoot the left hook down to the body. Excellent boxing. All right, guys, that's all I've got time for. I really hope you enjoyed this video. A lot of people have been asking me to do Mike Tyson film study, so I just thought I'd drop one as an early Christmas present for you guys. Mike Tyson, one of the most intelligent, one of the most skilled pressure fighters in boxing history. Uh, once again, please like, comment, subscribe. And with that said, on to the next one. Outside and jab you and counterpunch you, but you are very hard, apparently, to counterpunch as you come in. Now, why do you feel that so? Because I put so much training and effort into evading punches. As anyone say, as Henry Tillman said in an article, some um, derogatory things about I'm going to do it, I don't think, or move my head. As anybody can see, I'm almost a master at invading the punches coming at me. If anybody saw all of my fights, I don't get hit. I never have, I yet to have a bloody nose. I never had marks on my face. And as everybody say, it's hard because I'm a counter puncher myself, but I just do it with a lot of aggression. As everybody say, it's hard because I'm a counter puncher myself, but I just do it with a lot of aggression. It's hard because I'm a counter puncher myself, but I just do it with a lot of aggression. Please make sure you click the red button to subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Then check out some of my previous videos, or you could check out one of my more popular videos right now. Or you could do absolutely nothing and go out to the outro music. My cheese up, yeah, cheese up, yeah, been white, yeah, China white, yeah, drink a perk, yeah, smoke perk, yeah, brown.